at the races, Maryland Million 2024 edition. Welcome to the 39th at Jim McKay, Maryland Million, and welcome to Dan Illman. As per usual, we love having you, but a special, special day here today. Can't ask for anything more. Beautiful weather, full competitive fields, better friendly, low 12% takeout on the pick fives. You've got to get involved. The ponies are here. Everybody, the crowds are going to slowly start coming in by, probably by the end of our show. But let's go ahead and take a look. Drastic difference uh, to Maryland Million 2023. Blue skies, the track is fast, and that turf is nice and firm here on the lovely Laurel Lawn, Dan. Beautiful turf course today, fast main track. We celebrate the owners, breeders, trainers that do it every day here in um, Laurel Park in Maryland, the Maryland Sired Horses, the breeding program. Uh, this is a very exciting day, one of my favorite days of the year in Maryland racing. And that's saying something with the races that this man gets to see on a yearly basis. So with that being said, let's honor Maryland breds and Maryland sires here for Maryland Million Day 2024, starting with our early pick five of course, as Dan, as you mentioned, low industry, that 12% takeout starts in about 64 minutes and starts on the turf here in the lovely Laurel Lawn with the starter handicap for the girls three and up going a mile and 16. Dan, the number two on the inside doesn't hurt to flirt. No scratches here in this race. Kelly Rubley blinkers on. Gene Vello gets the call. Very consistent performer coming out of a good race at Colonial. The winner of that race, Active, came back to run second at the Meadowlands in an allowance race with a solid 76 buyer speed figure. We'll see Active a little bit later on in the Maryland Million Ladies where she is one of the top contenders in that race. I thought Doesn't Hurt to Flirt ran pretty well that day. Saved ground, split horses in the stretch, galloped out well, very competitive buyer speed figures and ran well over this course three starts back, fell far back in the early stages behind a fast pace and then came with a run. I think she'll get more of a fair pace scenario here and can be closer. A horse that's coming in off of a little bit of a nice momentum is put a rock on it. You're exacta here for 12 to 1 with Kelly DTA. Kemar Trotman gets the call. They teamed, they teamed up in the past for a win together. Certainly did. 5-1 to one winner at Charlestown on October the 3rd and put a rock on it. Improved with blinkers on last time out. Now she was wired that day by a 44-1 to one shot, but I like the progression we've seen ever since she's moved to turf. She's become a completely different horse. She's going to be a price in this race, and she's another one tactical enough to work out a trip. She might get a better race flow than last time. Let's talk about Daily Planet. You and I both have this one. Milan Milosevic, Forrest Boy you have to go with Forest Boys on a Maryland Million Day. Uh, especially on the turf. Forest exactly. excels in turf racing. Daily Planet's another horse that I think is just going to get a better pace scenario than last time out. The fractions weren't there for uh, her at Colonial. She still rallied for second. She's very honest, and the last time she raced at Laurel, mile and a sixteenth back in November of last year, she was able to win. I think she's racing herself back into shape. This is her fourth start off a lengthy layoff. To wrap things up, number four, Lady Ensign, I have as well. I will go ahead to a 11, 9, 4 for Dan Illman. Anything to quickly add on that last one? Oh, well, Lady Ensign I think is very interesting, although I didn't see much of an excuse last time out. Cleared to set an uncontested and slow pace and tired, hoping to get a similar situation here. There we go. 2, 11, 9, 4, Dan Illman. I go 13, 7, 4, 9. I will cover in later on today. As we go ahead to race number two, that starts our early pick five. And, of course, this is starting the stakes action here for the Maryland Million Day here in the Maryland Million Nursery. Stays intact for the most part, three quarters of a mile on the dirt for these two-year-olds. My value play ended up scratching great quality. The inside, we have a new rail horse in the number two in Barbadian Runner, but you go with the number eight, Dan, on the outside, and this is going to be remarkably Lynn Ashby. Carol Cedeno gets the call. This is a half-brother to Epic Luck, who's a stakes winner on the turf, but this horse has acquitted himself very well on the main track. Just look who he was in against last time out. It's hammer time might be the best two-year-old in the region right now, and he emerged from that last race to win the Rocky Run at Delaware earlier this week with an 85 buyer speed figure, a serious number for a two-year-old. Remarkably ran pretty well in that race, was actually favored over its hammer time. Pressed that horse down inside, don't think he was comfortable down there, okay. eased him back, tried to make a second run into that horse, and still held on pretty well for a second. Outside trip oh. this time's going to help. Absolutely. One that I'm, I'm kind of questioning on because of the post in general, because as you know, Dan, this race can just get so chaotic. Same each 
here you have underneath for Robbie Bales, JV in Toledo. Very, very impressive first up with this. Ken, what are your thoughts on this one being able to handle all of that action on the outside? I think that's a very good point because not only is uh, he going to be stepping up in class out of a debut victory and spotting experience to some of the other horses, there's a little pace in this race. And in the debut, he got away with an easy lead. That being said, he looked very, very good. He took money like he was going to be live. He went right to the front and he ran to his pedigrees. I have to Princess Kokachin, who's a multiple stakes winner on this circuit, and he beat two next out winners. Robbie Bales does such good work. Sent out a 46 to one winner here, what, last week? Yes, he, and he did. It was it, Robbie Bales, especially with these kind of first, second time starters. The barn has been really gearing up in the past two years on that particular stat alone. The number seven, this is another barn that goes well with their first, second, third time, and so on. Two-year-old starters, essentially, all the hard ways for Jerry Robb. Victor Carrasco gets the call, gets the addition of the Blinkers here today. I think that could be a big addition because I think all the hard ways just needs to focus a little bit more. Jerry Robb has been on fire. Five for the last 23, 21%, $2.43 return on investment since September the 14th, right. and I think all the hard ways ran well. I know he finished behind remarkably last time out. He was four wide at the back, made a five wide sustained bid through the turn, and it's just a lot to ask against those quality two-year-olds to lose that kind of ground and still win. I think he gets a better trip here. Let's finish things up. Curtis K, Jamie Ness, also with the blinkers on attack that you're going for here with Jamie Rodriguez. Just didn't really didn't get the trip on the inside last time out. Just didn't and didn't show the kind of speed that he's shown in the past, and I think that's why Jamie's putting the blinkers on this afternoon. Curtis K did show speed two starts back when he finished behind Remarkable and all the hard ways. I'm expecting expecting him to be more forwardly placed. Why not? Absolutely. Dan Illman, 8376 with remarkably on top for the Maryland Million Nursery. Let's go ahead to race number three in the Maryland Million Ladies. That starts the older turf action here today, or older stakes action here today. A mile and an eighth on the turf for these three-year-old girls and up. Let's go ahead and discuss your top selection. A circle home draws in off of the AE list. That's a really big, that's a really big change up to the, to the setup here of the race as we do have a couple of scratches here. Italian War Cry was 30 to 1, knocks it out, brings Circle P back in. Yeah, Circle Home is a very, Circle. very dangerous contender in this race. Coming out of the all along stakes, an open race won by no show Sammy Joe, who's an extremely talented horse trained by Graham Motion. Circle Home settled at the back, made a four wide bid on the second turn. Looked like he had a big, looked like she had a big look at it in mid stretch, and then just finished behind two horses that might be a little bit better than she is. Yeah. This is a great spot from a class standpoint. She just needs a little bit of pace help. Nope, I agree. You go from the outside to the inside. Downtown Katie, and I can see this, Mikey Gorham, Jamie Rodriguez had a couple, you know, looking at this whole thing, I think she just propped up really well to run today. Another horse coming into this race in very good form after facing a solid field at Delaware. Princess Javancy is no joke. That horse came back to run second in a starter allowance race with an 84 buyer's speed figure. Downtown Katie doesn't have a lot of speed, so she's going to be taken back early and hope to make one run. Mikey Gorham's been on a roll lately. Five for the last 15, $3.92 return on investment since September 27th. Absolutely. That kind of, it, again, she ran against Union Suit from that allowance win and that who just won over here just at Laurel just the other day, so sets up really well. Let's also discuss the number eight on the outside and active. This is your nine to five favorite for Grand Motion, Georgia Ruiz. Uh, what's not to love here about this pairing comes over from the Meadowlands last time yeah, out. Comes out of a good effort finishing second to the favorite Sir, you never looked like a winner but was game to get second after making a four wide bid at the quarter pole. Graham does well with just about everything. Six for 28, 21%, 367 ROI, third after two to four month layoffs. Uh, usually don't like horses coming from the Meadowlands though so maybe I'll try to fade her a little bit. We do need to talk about Precious Avery who won this race last year and I think we have a video we spotlight do. for Precious Avery winning last year's Maryland Million Ladies, and this is what she likes to do best, go right to the front. Go right to the front, and the race kind of sets up well for her to be able to do that. The only tick I have against her here today is that she's kind of coming, the way she's on a different path, she was coming in really, really fresh 
in that effort last year. So she's coming back to defend her title, and very rightly so. She's just got, and she's coming second off of the layoff, and yes, that's still fresh. She might be the type that newly needs a race. I think I love her strictly off of the layoff, but if you look back in that effort, back from April and June, she kind of gave a little bit of an effort like she did back in September that we just saw last time out, but then she could be propping up for a really nice go, but I left her off just because I see the different pattern structure. Two things perhaps going in her favor today. That scratch is huge because yeah. that was the other speed in the race, and now Precious Avery can get to the front. And I talked to Tim Shaw earlier this week and said this, she, he said this horse had an excuse last time out, didn't scope very well with mucus um, after the race. He says she's training like a bear, and if she gets the same trip she did last year, she could be tough to okay, run Okay, then, then that changes a lot of things. Dan Elman with that, with that uh, backside knowledge information there on your defending champion in Precious Avery. Juniper Juice, we just have to quickly mention here, Kevin sure. Boniface, Forrest Boyce. I really just, I love the whole storyline of what we are getting from the Bonifaces with this mare uh, coming in here to, for the Maryland turf. And I just think this horse is all upside. We probably haven't yeah. seen her best. Her last race was so impressive because she stayed close to a 23-38 first quarter, a 23-60 second quarter, blew by the leader, kept on going. She's very interesting. She's your top pick, and you're going to get a little bit of a price. She's my. She's actually my be one of my best bets of the day here. She ran against a really nice, highly touted service turf runner last time out, and she just she just kind of put that one to bed. So I think 9184 for Dan Elman there. Uh, I go 4856, but uh, just kind of I just got reminded of that circle home coming in off AE list. So you might be seeing a little bit of change in my picks later on, but we have to interesting race there for the Maryland Mil Million Ladies Turf. And let's go ahead to back to starter handicap action here in race number four. Seven furlongs on the dirt. You and I both go with the number two devil pays in gold. We do have a scratch in the number 13 buck and lucky, but uh, that one was coming in 30 to 12 to one. So, but we go both go with the Kieran McGee and Caramanos. I do, although I think this is more of a spread race from a multiple race wager standpoint. Devil pays in gold is coming into this race in very good form for Kieran McGee. Yep. Pressed the pace last time out, went after the favorite on the turn and ended up Finishing a good third, Late Frost is a really good solid stake source, open stake source here in the Mid-Atlantic Circuit. Devil Pays in Gold, though, is going to have to do this at seven, and she's going to have to do it facing other speeds. I think breaking from post two, Karamanos is just going to have to go, and we'll see how far she goes. But I think she likes that kind of trip. She ha she likes that inside pressure kind of spot, so that's kind of why I said, oh, hey, let's go this direction with her. You also kind of veer off Isabel's glory, Darwin Rodriguez, uh, looking for win number three in a row here. I mean, what's not to like here? It fits the perfect distance as well. I, I, I agree with you 100% about that. I love horses turning back to seven furlongs after route efforts. Isabella's Glory ran a two-turn, six-and-a-half at Timonium, two back, scored, scored last time out going the one-turn mile. She has one route to sprint in the past, and she's going to get a setup. Absolutely. The number one on the inside, uh, just to wrap things up here, lovely charm, Claudio Gonzalez, Georgie Vargas Jr. I also include this one. Uh, pleasant Embrace, not only won an X time out, but has been on a kind of a tear all summer for Kelly Green, so that was a nice horse that she was up against last out. And Pleasant Embrace got everything her own way. I thought that day at Monmouth was an inside speed favoring track. She got to the front. Lovely Charm did race on the preferred rail footing most of the way, got up for second. Uh, she was listed as a vet scratch sick on September 22nd, but another horse with a lot of upside potential. Just kind of needs to work out a trip. I think she'll get some pace to attack. Yep, a lot of options here. 2517 for Dan Illman there in race number four. Race number five, we keep at that starter handicap level here. Here, but we go back on the turf here, going a mile and 16th for the three-year-olds and up. You and I both land on Hunter Joe as this field completely stays intact here for Hammy Smith and Jamie Rodriguez. Uh, we know what we're going to get from Hunter Joe. He's going to yeah. be a little bit of a grump behind the gate, and you're going <laughs> to load yes. him in without the rider. But from a speed figure standpoint, he stands out in here. I'm not sure I completely trust Hunter Joe, but look at the horses he's been running in against. Two starts back on the turf and against Jean Valjean, who's just one of the better turf sprinters in yeah. the country or on the region. Faced two next out winners that day and midday image. The third place finisher came back to run third in an allowance at Saratoga with a 95 buyer speed figure. He's capable going long. Let's see what kind of trip he works out from the outside. Again, again I like the sneaky Hammy, the sneaky Jamie Rodriguez. They don't team up that often, but when they do, they usually pack a punch. Let's talk about the number two, Samai Sunset, Mark Beecher, JV and Toledo team up here. They kind of come back again second off of the jumps effort here at Laurel Lawn. 
I, I think this is a very strong contender, and I'm using the source in the multis. His most recent start just to me looked like a prep. It was his first day back after a 302-day layoff. He got shuffled along the inside. He showed some mild interest in the stretch. I think from a fitness standpoint, he gains a lot from that race. He's run well going second off long layoffs in the past, and he drew a comfortable post position. That's so that's great. Uh, I love that coming in class. Wizard, Ted Mayer, Sheldon Russell, they finally got things together last time out. The distance of the mile and eighth is going to help out here today. This is a horse they were very intent on getting aggressive with him out of the gate last time out. Really urged him to get close, and I think that was the key. He was able to take over the lead early on the turn and then used his stamina to grind down the runner-up who came back to run third in a starter allowance at Delaware with a 74 buyer speed figure. You'll know Class Wizard in the paddock. He'll be wearing his usual cheek pieces. Yes. I think this time around they may take him back because the pace could be stronger. The pace could be strong, but I still, here's the thing, I just, uh, the horse was definitely, hit. he's been lollygagging all tw all that 2024 season, so I still feel like Sheldon's going to send a little bit, but he'll just tuck right behind any speed that they've got going on there. So the number 12 on the outside, power back here underneath at 30 to 1 for Robin Graham. Gina Bello gets the call here. They've been having some, you know, they've been having some dirty f uh, form here recently. I, I think that's a perfect way to put it. I've always been a big fan of power back. This is not a great post position, but he does have speed, and he should show stretch out speed. Five and a half last time is just way too short for him. He's stretching out to a more appropriate distance. It's all about whether he can get a trip, but he's going to be a giant price as he is on the morning line, and he's worth considering at least on the bottom of single race exotic. Absolutely. There, 11, 12 at 9, 11, 2, 9, 12 there for Dan Illman. Love those prices underneath. Dan Illman, we are going to get to race number six. Not only does that start the jackpot, but that also starts your, this is, for those who don't know, Dan Illman had a nice 60 to 1 price on the top, and he will be forever infamous for that. But let's see what he can do in this year's Lassie. Let's take a look at what you've got here with Malibu Hooch on the outside for Todd Beatty. Julio Hernandez keeps and retains the ride here. Tried the bigger track last time out in a nice 62.5. I guarantee this horse will not pay 60 to 1 if she wins, but <laughs> I do think Malibu Hooch has a very good chance in that race. Thank you for the shout out. I appreciate of that. Of course. She's a full to Malibu Moonshine, multiple stakes winner and a precocious horse. We'll see her later on in the yep. card. And in her debut, she was speedy. Four furlongs at Timonium, blasted right out to the front. Like to see that speed and precocity. I think that last race is better than it looks on paper. It was a mm -hmm. very fast race. She broke from the far outside post. She was on a very hard chase in between horses, and she gave way grudgingly in the stretch. I'm looking for a more patient trip here. She'll be close, but maybe not doing the dirty work pushing the leader. She got a lot out of that last race, and plus she did a near bullet work just five days ahead of that run, so I think that she, she wasn't showing on her best. She's going to really be showing up packing a punch here. The number five underneath is no need to ask Lynn Ashby, Carol Cedeno, first time against winners but this one and this you we talked about this earlier on an ESPN show this one highly underrated in that effort last out. Well it's a confidence builder they dropped her out of a stakes race she was one to ten she was supposed to win by the length of the stretch and she did she got a perfect trip pressing a 33 to one shot but I liked the way she roared on home she got a very uh, competitive buyer speed figure the worry is these are much tougher horses this will be a tougher pace situation and I think she's going to be hustled to the front demand value. Carol Sedano is going to get aggressive on that front end to be able to put her in the right spot. So I like that at a lot of value. Let's talk about the rail horse in Shikara Fire. Angel Cruz gets the call eight to one on the morning line, but you've got to respect. If the pace is hot, this one is the best closer in the field. Finished ahead of three of these, including Malibu Hooch last time out. Bumped at the start, four wide bid on the turn, kept on going. It's all about how she breaks from the rail, which can be sometimes tricky for these babies. Yep. And if she gets the trip, she could be outrun early. She's going to probably have to come around again. I'm expecting her to be running late. Let's talk about Onyx 10, Gary Cap, Tori Alba coming back from Del summer at Delaware. Just not getting the best, just having a little bit of unluck, a little bit of a toughness is going to still be asked plenty of questions here because I still think the race is going to end up still being a little bit chaotic. So this is where this one might need to get a chance to shine through. But if she runs back to that 70 buyer from two starts back, she's going to be tough. And she's been facing one of the better two-year-old fillies in the region in Caprice in her last two races. Caprice stretched out and ran second in the White 
Clay Creek at Delaware earlier this week and has a lot of talent. I think Onyx 10 is still trying to figure out, but she doesn't have only one 70 buyer. She has two, and that makes her competitive, and Gary Cap wins at a high rate. We have to talk about your top pick, though. The Divine Works, I go for a stab at 6-1 to one on the outside for Michael Trombetta, who not only won three races on Thursday, he continued to win well on Friday as well. The barn is on an absolute tear right now. Now, this one, the dam is a half to Catherine Sophia. The dam also won second at timeout, going gate to wire. Last time out, this in, in that Saratoga effort, lost out to another cliche who was tried in the grade one for Zet next time out. And that filly just didn't get the trip in the Frizette as well that she needed. So I think with this way everything is working, we get that outside post for this one. Makes things a lot easier today. And just think that up at Saratoga, she was bet to favoritism that day. Obviously, Trombi likes this filly. And that, as you said, this barn's on a roll. It's exactly divining ride 18% with his second time starters at 10-5. One, four for Dan Illman in the Lassie. Anything else? Listen, we, we're going to talk about our picks, but is there, there's so much in this field to cover. Haya Love, Milan Milosevic, Forrest Boys ran second to Days, who is a very highly touted filly for Brittany Russell. Days is one of the better two-year-old fillies in the region. Came back to win a first-level allowance with a 76 buyer. Listen, Haya Love could have taken the path of least resistance and mm -hmm. run in a maiden race tomorrow. They're running her here. She was really live that day, just unfortunate to run into Days. You've got Biscuit with the boss, the full to Basarati, who's going to show some speed in this race for the Brittany Russell barn. I think Persian is a little bit interesting at a price. If you mm. want to throw in a long shot, a daughter of Blofeld, just up against a speed favoring track in her debut. Yeah. But I thought she did some good things and she took some sneaky money that day. She did, and she did. Linda Albert, sneaky as well, with kind of those second and third time starters there. 10 5, 1 4 for Dan Elman. I go 2 1 10 3 there in the Maryland Million. Alassi, we will be right back after this commercial break to talk about the rest. And uh, they're off. Before we get back into Maryland Million, a turf uh, stakes action, we are at the Rainbow Pick 6 portion of the day. We've got that nice, of course, uh, pool that's going to be happening out. Great sequence. I couldn't believe I landed on a $28.80 ticket, but we'll get to the race. The distaff, a lot of scratches there really affected my ticket. The race number nine, kind of my personal highlight of the day, the Maryland Million turf sprint. Uh, we've got Witty. We've got When I Get to Heaven. We've got Great Idea, who may be sneaky. And then, of course, Bossarati, the girls against the boys there. So then I could have gone, if you're going to do, if you want to spend a little bit more money, go a little bit wider on race number 12. I go with a little bit of a price for Troy Singh, second win uh, there with uh, Irish Warlock, I do That's believe. Right. Yep, well, Irish Warlock, there you go with your paper helping me out. Thank you. $28.80 ticket. Brian and Mackenzie will cover that later on today. Starts in race number seven, that rainbow pick six in the Maryland Million Turf stakes here, a mile and an eighth on the turf for the three-year-olds and up. Dan, you go with the number eight sports editor. Let's look, take a, let's go ahead and take a look at exactly why you've got this one in your top selection for Ned Allard and Jamie Rodriguez. We're taking a look at that last effort at Mammoth. And this is a mile and a half race. They really tried to stretch sports editor's speed against open stakes company and the precious passion. Cleared off, set the pace, and listen, he's still got the lead here. He's just going to get run down by a horse that loves distance, and that's California Frolic. I think sports editor now with that race under his girth and turning back to a more appropriate distance, uh, this is good what he wants to do. He might be a need to lead type. I'm hoping he's not because there's other speeds to his inside. He has finished first rallying from off the pace in the past. So I'm just hoping that Jamie who usually does the right thing, gets him to relax. No, no, no. This one has some tools in the toolbox to be able to handle this kind of trip. You go back to that June effort of last year, and I want to discuss June this year as well. He was against tough horses like the Addison Poor, Hard Spun Reason. He's got that ability to sit off of that. So those, the, those efforts, the field from that effort on the 20, 15th of June were he did come off of the pace. Serious horses that are just so consistent on this mid-Atlantic circuit here on the turf. Let's also just dis also discuss the number three to the inside. You have to include Starstruck Notion here for Patrick McGurney. Forrest Boyce gets the call. Two to one your morning line. 
major player coming out of an open stakes race at Monmouth, just like the top pick. And this horse didn't have a clean trip that day, didn't break very well, was four wide all the way through the turn and into the stretch, and tried so hard to just miss third. The seventh place finisher from that race came back to place in an allowance at Delaware with an 89 buyer. This horse just fits, and he's a little bit more tactical. If he can break well, he can actually sit behind the speeds and get a much better trip this time. And that's that effort four back is kind of that perfect ascent trip he was I like the fact that he's the type of horse where you can ask him early kind of get him into contention early in the sense of a jock's perspective of asking him early and he's able to go on and roll with it the number five sky's not falling Michael Trombetta Tony Gallardo this one is serious confidence booster last time out from that effort at Colonial inheriting the lead really looked good that day was able to get to the front I know the horse that was pressing him was a long shot but those fractions were legitimate sky's not falling created separation at just the right time he was very late to change leads in the stretch was drifting out in the stretch a bit, which I don't love, but this is a horse that can do it anyway. He can win from on the lead. He can win from off the pace. Didn't he win the Maryland Million Turf Sprint a couple of years ago? So he's just a versatile, he cool horse. Very, very versatile. Hank's Divining Rod, Henry Walters, Leo Hernandez coming over. Same distance, fits here. Going to be comfortable on this Laurel Turf. Just got the right setup last time out. They went a blazing pace in front of Hank's Divining Rod, and he took advantage against a weaker field. So it's a bit of an ask for him on the win end but maybe he can liven up your exotics if he passes some tired horses. Totally Let's talk great. about crabs and crabs beer. Crabs and though. beer. The big, biggest thing I want to touch on crabs and beer. Carrie Bryan, two for eight. Colonial to Laurel as of lately, four for eight in the money. But holding out on the hope that he just kind of needed a little bit of that freshener, definitely going to be coming in a little bit different than what we saw last time out at Colonial. He kind of came running at the end. The field was a whole bit spread out on the race as a whole, and I just think he needs to be placed a little bit more forwardly here. I think right now for crabs and beer, that's the ticket of what he needs because of course we're all kind of hanging on that dinner party effort but we need to see that again. Oh he's the class master in this race. You talked about the dinner party. It was a wet turf course but he ran great against graded stakes competition and it's just been one tough allowance race after another and last time out he got wired at Colonial and the runner up came back placed in New York in an allowance race with an 88 buyer. Crabs and beer fits this race like a glove and I think it's going to get a better setup this time. I love it. So uh, plenty of options there. Dan Illman goes 8-3 Five six, I go five eight seven three. Hoping for a little bit of value there with skies not falling underneath. Let's go ahead to the Maryland Million Sprint that also starts the late pick five here, going six furlongs on the dirt for the three year olds and up. Dan, Hugh, and I both land on. My best bet of the day, Celtic contender, Hammy Smith, Victor Carrasco here. Just a lightly raced horse that seems to do very well in these one-turn events. And Celtic contender won last time out over a very promising horse named Doc Link. Has earned a very strong buyer speed figure. He did get up close to the pace over a track that I thought was speed favoring, but I like the way he finished it off. Now he's going to have to do it at a longer distance, and he might have to come from a little bit farther off of a fast pace. But I think this is the perfect confidence booster. Look at the way Celtic contender is strong and confident in the stretch, getting away from a promising runner, and from a speed figure standpoint, he fits. And this is him just kind of doing things on his own. I personally love him where he's kind of neck and neck with the horse even better. I love, I think he loves kind of getting into that drama of the field. And so with the way you kind of explain how his setup is going to be in this race, that might actually work out better for him. It's going to be, you know, a little bit hair raising for Hammy, but that's Hammy's problem, not Celtic contenders. Let's also talk about the number one, always in a hurry you have to just he respect our veteran here for Phil Capuano Michael Sanchez gets the call I think he's a big sleeper in this race because his most recent start was his first race off of a short layoff and I think it was a perfect prep it was not a truly run race only a field of four controlled up top by the classy Prince of Jericho always in a hurry tried to rally widest from the uh, from last didn't work out this is a more truly run race full field more speed expect a late kick exactly Phil Capuano after just chatting with him after that he kind of had very similar sentiments about the race as a whole it just didn't go as planned of what he wanted going on to the number seven to the outside in band camp bit of a buzz horse bit of a buzz barn here Ra for Annette Eubanks and Tori Alva absolutely Annette Eubanks five for the last 15 two dollar 52 cent ROI moving route to sprint they tried to stretch band camp out to a one turn mile last time out in search of his what one two three four five sixth consecutive victory he right. just missed he didn't change leads in the stretch but getting 
back to seven in a race with pace. This horse is a very nice turn of foot. This is also a barn that's 100% in the money for this fall meet, thus for this capital meet thus far. Absolutely have to respect. I'm trying to see what kind of value I can get amongst my best bet there. We've had about talk, talk about Johnny Z from Albany, Phil Capuano, Horacio Caramos, that last race really sold me on him here. He's really kind of developmentally after that I last one. I think he's getting back into form. Remember, he won the yeah. nursery on Maryland Million Day two years ago, and he just never got a breather last time out. He had to battle through a 22-second, second quarter mile in that race. He still finished second behind the odds-on winner, the classy Repo Rocks, who returned to finish second in the Parks Mile with a 91 buyer speed figure. Uh, Johnny Z from Albany is going to show big speed. We'll see if Arden's lucky to be pushes yes. him a bit. 7's 11 is the key to this race, though. There we go. 7 11, 2 1, 7 4. We go a different way. We'll see if 7's 11 can kind of come back just into that form coming off of the Vosberg. Very, very hard question there and challenge. Yeah, the Vosberg was just way too tough for him. There's just been a lot of moving parts, whether it's been barn switches or blinkers on and blinkers off. Yep. If he runs back to his race, two starts back, that 98 buyer will be too much for these. I just wonder if he takes a little bit too, mon too much money for my taste. Got it. Celtic contender Dan and I go there in the. Sprint. Let's go ahead and talk about the turf sprint in race number nine, of course, here. Five and a half on the turf. Starts the late pick four. Dan, let's get right to it. Let's talk about Woody. I do have a typo on my picks because I have Woody on top here as well. Let's take a look at Woody winning the Maryland Million Turf Sprint last year, Dan. We just got a great setup and ride. Toledo is very, very patient at the back, and he's hoping right now that the inside's going to open up because he's got plenty of horse. The inside opened up, and the long stretch helped. Helped Witty and Witty is now extending his stride and he runs by everybody. And this is what he does when he's at his best. His last race to me is an utter throwout. A, it was a Kentucky Downs. Some mm -hmm. horses just don't run there at all. And B, he was in against the best turf sprinter in North America, Cogburn, who's going to be the big favorite in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. It's nice to know that one of the other also rans from that race at Kentucky Downs has come back and done well. The fifth place horse placed in the grade two Woodford at Keeneland the other day with a 95 buyer. Woody he ran fine two starts back at Colonial. Good spot in mid-pack, but had to go very wide into the stretch, herd it out a bit in mid-stretch. This long turf course with the second wire finish, it helps his kick. That's that was that's my biggest note on Woody. He's just going to be so thrilled to get back to the second wire finish. Huge, huge effort here for Woody potentially here today. Let's talk about another big effort that we're going to be getting here from when I get to heaven for Nolan Ramsey. Tori Alba gets the call. This horse is going to come back firing. This horse is in very good form, and he is no joke. So Woody's going to have to have him nailed on tight if he's going to beat when I get to heaven, because when I get to heaven is way more tactical. He's going to get the jump on Woody turning for home, and he's going to say, come and catch me. Yeah. This horse finished ahead of two next out winners in his most recent start at Colonial. The third place horse came back to win on the synthetic at Tapita with an 87 buyer speed figure, and he just looked really good in the Benz Cat two starts back, and in his race prior, Nolan Ramsey has a very good job. Absolutely. The number seven had to have him. John Salzman, senior force boys. So, uh, you and I have pr talked about this earlier. We're actually keying in on that June effort, early June effort where Forrest rode this one. Yeah, Forrest rode this horse, ran really well from off of the pace, and is coming off of a nice win last time out. He didn't break very well, but was very fortunate the pace wasn't fast, so he was able to get close to the lead. He looked green in the stretch. He must have swapped leads about three or four times, but he was able to get it done. He has a race or two in the past to uh, make him th a threat. I yeah. think he's more of a threat underneath. Okay, there we go. And the number two, to respect, you have to go gr with great idea, Phil Capuano. Horacio Caramas is ho the a horse that is just coming into the right form at the right time here. Like when I get to heaven, coming into this race sharp, got a very nice trip last time out, winning that state sired allowance over course and distance. Now has to prove it against better horses, but coming into this race off a two race winning streak, he deserves a chance. Absolutely. Wanted to mention Bossarati, the girls who run, the girl who runs against the boys here today, going to be your pace setter of the race here, uh, and is able to handle this Laurel Park turf. She is a Maryland bred champion, and more importantly, she has has speed. I think she is the speed of this race. Basarati is going to get to the front. Now she's going to have to hold off when I get to heaven. Yep. And if she does, here comes Witty from the back. Exactly. So she's going to have to do a lot of work. But I do respect her speed and I do respect her ability, especially over this course. And I do respect what the Russells do. Yes, absolutely. This girl loves to fight here. And we'll see how well she does in the Maryland Million Turf Sprint. And let's go ahead to race number nine. This was my highlight race of the day here in the Maryland Million Distaff. But the race didn't fall apart. Not 
not at all, but it got, we had some significant scratches here in the number two Malibu Beauty, the eight Miss Harriet, the 14 Benny, the 13 Berzina, and the number seven I'm getting there. But you and I both end up landing on the number 10. Foxy Jr., you were had faith in Foxy Jr. this entire week. I, I ended up landing on her via scratches, but let's go ahead and take a look at her professional effort last time out at Parks that really got everybody's attention. She just really got a beautiful ride under Yomar Torres this day at Parks and the Plum Pretty Stakes. It helped that the big favorite in here, Morning Match, it didn't fire. But Foxy Jr., look at Torres make all the right moves. He was saving ground early. He got to the outside. He got back to the rail. It opens up, and Foxy Jr. does the rest. But I'm not sure this race was a trip-aided fluke. She has also won her prior three starts on dirt. Uh, and her race two starts back at Presque Isle, Torres told me he just didn't think he gave her a very good ride and trip that day. I like, and I like horses cutting back to seven furlongs. I'm a little disappointed that some of the speed scratched out of here. Mm -hmm. So Foxy Jr. is going to have to stay close. And that's never easy cutting back in distance. It's not. It's not. But I feel like Yomar is going to be really on top of it, getting her placed correctly. The number six, Buzz Horse, Buzz Philly Spencerian here for Hugh McMahon, looking for win number four in a row. First time in stakes company here with Toledo. But she's three for three this yeah. year, and she just looks like a completely different animal. Her most recent start, she aired against first level allowance. She won by 11, and she looked like safely kept that day. Hugh McMahon does very well with these quick turnbacks. Seven for the last 23, $3 and, uh, 30%, $2.03 ROI, coming back on nine days or less. So wow. don't be too concerned about the quick turnback. That's, that's, there we go. Dan Illman backing up with the stats in the Hugh McMahon specialty. Let's talk about the number five, Bourbon Bombay, first off of the layoff for Ned Allard. Coming off of how many days here? 410-day layoff. 410-day layoff for a mayor who's seven years old and has obviously had her share of problems, but she's a great story. She's won five of six. She's a stakes winner. Uh, I talked to her owner and breeder earlier this week. She said earlier this year Bourbon Bombay suffered from a fractured jaw. They had to take the tooth out. And now she's back training and training well for Ned Aller. The scratches help her because she can get close to the pace. Big time, big time. Talking about the number nine on the outside here is going to be Sheila's War Cloud for Justin Nixon, Jean Brusino. Just a hard knocking filly who loves this distance. In many ways, I think she's the horse to beat because she's coming into this race the right way for a master trainer. This horse won back in January. Justin wanted to give her, her some time, sent her out to the farm. She had a paddock accident that delayed her return, but it might have worked out for the best because she's had two preps for this race, and the last race was a perfect prep, rallying home over this seven for a long distance. She gets the setup, and she kicks late. Let's go ahead, Dan Illman, six, 10, 6, 5, 9. I also mentioned Malibu Moonshine on the inside. Finally, running on the Maryland Million Weekend for the first time. The past two years, she has been a scratch, but she runs here today. But let's go ahead to the big race. Let's talk about the Maryland Million Classic here, going a mile and an eighth on the dirt. Let's go ahead and take a look at that drama exactly from this time last year for the Maryland million between Ain't the Beer Cold and Market Maven both coming but running back here today. Nice to see these two guys back in action and Ain't the Beer Cold and Market Maven really threw it down through an exciting final three sixteenths of a mile. Market Maven is going to end up finishing first. He's going to take a tough disqualification which will place Ain't the Beer Cold in the winner's circle. But look at these two. They're just trying so hard. The epitome of the Maryland breads in these sort of races. They're all hard triers and I'm expecting these two to run well again. I know Ain't the Beer Cold's recent form isn't good, but I think they're going to be aggressive and show speed. Oh, absolutely. We're going to expect to be Ain't the Beer Cold to be the pace setter, but Dan, you go with the number 10, Brilliant Ice there, or Annette Eubanks, who's just going to be sitting, who's going to be, where do you think this horse is going to be placed? Is he going to be sitting right off of Ain't the Beer Cold? Or will, he, will he go head-to-head -head with him? Uh, I think he's hoping that Ain't the Beer Cold and maybe Hit the Road Jack go at it early. This horse yeah. does have stretch out speed. He's got to hustle from this outside post. I think if they could find a three-wide spot tracking going into the first turn. They'll be very happy. This distance is a big question mark for Brilliant Ice, especially off a little bit of a layoff. I'm picking him because I think he's going uh, to offer some value in this race. But for me, again, this is a spread race. Very Ab competitive. Absolutely. You go with Market Maven underneath, who we just saw Hacinta, with now with Jacinto Solis. Anything to add uh, from that effort that we saw last year? But coming in, what's his, what do you think his prep is coming into this effort? I think it's the same preparation as last year, and I think that's a good sign. Repeating the pattern.
pattern from the uh, alpha, from the Stormcat to the Alphabet Soup to the Maryland Million Classic, throw out the last race on a tough turf course down inside the time before. This horse gets a good trip in behind the speeds. Right behind the speed. That's going to be set up well for Market Maven. The number four Mosler time for Cal Lynch gets Jamie Rodriguez. This is my top selection, Dan. Distance has been the key to Mosler time achieving his full potential. Ever since he runs and stretches out in route races, he's a different horse. He just blew by the leader to make the lead. Right. Three furlongs out into the most confident ride possible. Big buyer speed figure, big player today. Mugatu, sell me on Mugatu for Jeff Engler and Sheldon Russell. This horse has just kind of been a little bit of the back class of the of the field here today, but uh, just needs a little, I think he might find a little bit of help here today. I think there are two things to like about Mugatu. A, exactly what you said. There is pace to set him up, and he is a late running, long striding horse that needs as much pace as possible, and B, he gets the class relief. He was in the Preakness, he was in the Bluegrass. Last time out, he was in the Bourbon Flight, and he got wired by batting down to one of the Ohio Derby earlier this year. Yep. This is major class relief for him, and we'll see how he stacks up against the older horses as he tries them for the first time. And that's Dan Illman for the Maryland Million Classic there. With Brilliant Ice, I do go with Mosler time, as mentioned. Wrapping things up here for race number 12 in the starter handicap, going seven furlongs on the dirt. Dan, you give us club men here. A little bit of a value play for Joanne Shankel as Mirio Villalobos gets the call. He's a 10-year-old, and I just love club man as he seeks his 19th lifetime win. I also yeah. think he's completely completely dirtied up coming into this race. Three starts back, his first race off a significant layoff. He caught a sloppy track, he caught three next out winners, and he caught a speed favoring track draw a line through it. His last two is at Timonium. I know he's run well at Timonium in the past. I think as he's gotten older, those tight turns might not be what he wants. Exactly. He's getting back to a fair track. He's going to get some pace. I'm expecting a late run at a price. There we go. Talk about another price really quickly. 12 to 1 on Divine Child for Carlos Mancia and Georgie Ruiz. Only uh, uh, has one win, but big drop in class. And against Celtic Contender last time out, we yeah. both like him in the sprint. He would be a huge favorite in this race. Divine Child is another horse. We haven't seen his best. Absolutely. 7-2, 13 8 for Dan Illman. Dan, let's dive into those picks if we can. We're going to start things off with Keith Fusel's value play with all the hard ways. Again, you've got that lovely stat here for Jerry, the Jerry Rob runner in race number two in the, nurse, in the nursery. Yeah, Jerry Rob's just been very, very hot recently, and all the hard ways did not have a good trip last time out. First time blinkers listed as a first time gelding. He comes with a kick. Dan, you also have your best bet in race number two with remarkably Lynn Ashby, Carol Sedano. Love the company this horse has been keeping. It's hammer time, one of the better two-year-olds in the region. The source tried to make two moves into him last time. I think is more patiently handled here. We'll go quickly through my best bet and my value play. My best bet is going to be in the Maryland Million Turf Sprint. Ladies with Juniper Juice for Boniface and Boyce. Perfect combination to win on a Maryland Million Day. This filly, as you mentioned, Dan, we haven't seen the best of her. She made good work out of that field last time out. She's on the upswing. Race number six is my value play there with Divine Works for Trombetta and Sanchez. The barn is on a tear. This one gets an outside post ran in Saratoga Company and was the betted favorite last time out. Dan, let's go to your best bet, though. In race number 12 here, you just mentioned Shankle and Villa Lobos there for Clubman. Just think this horse with his back class and his running style is going to offer some value. Absolutely. Dan, thank you so much. It's been a lovely Maryland Million Day thus far. Not a single cloud in the sky. It's going to be a great day here today. Thank you for joining us. We're going to go to Dave Rodman for some more changes and scratches. Good luck.